So let's look at some of these hyperdraw tricks, uh, little things we can do, yeah? This is quite cool, some of these things, yeah? So, our track automation synth parameters have been now transferred and they live safely in the region, all right? Now, of course we are going to use the track automation because it allows us to select our synth parameters by name, there's no need to look up silly numbers and things like that. And we can use the quick access controller as well if we want. But the best policy is to then dump into Hyperdraw. Okay, now, you might think though, I can simply find out the controller number for the uh, ESM parameters because I've now transferred them from track automation where I could choose them by name I've transferred them into Hyperdraw now, and now I can look at them in Hyperdraw, find out what the controller number is, and from that point on, I can just directly go and put my controllers into Hyperdraw for the ESM. I don't need to do this thing of first choosing the parameters by name in Track Automation, putting the moves into Track Automation, then dumping them into Hyperdraw. Oh, you, th you think you can do that? Okay, well, let's, let's try it. So we've got our cutoff in the pattern now, in the region, transferred across from track automation and it's now living as hyperdraw. We know this controls the cutoff because we can see it working. I'll just put a big peak in there like that, watch. Watch the cutoff. Right, there it goes, yeah. Definitely it's controlling the cutoff and command Y. Definitely the resonance is controlling the resonance. So we know these are the right controller numbers for the cutoff and the resonance, okay? So we think, okay, I'll be clever. This is my cutoff. I know it's the correct controller number for the cutoff. So let me look at my list other. Oh, look, you say to yourself. Controller number three is highlighted. Oh, look, and it's on channel two here as well. Look, this is the channel, yeah? Hmm, that's strange because the track, where I originally created the track automation and then dumped it into this hyperdraw, and it now lives in, in here as hyperdraw, um, that track is actually, look, on MIDI channel 1. But anyway, oh, well, maybe it's using a, a different MIDI channel for the automation for the synth. But all I, I can see that, um, you know, controller number 3 is highlighted when I open this list. And, and the cutoff here in Hyperdraw is, is, is the visible parameter. What happens if I choose controller number 2? Oh, that cutoff information disappears. If I choose any of these other numbers, there's no cutoff visible suddenly, but as soon as I choose controller number three, there's my cutoff. Hmm. What about if I change the channel to channel one? Oh, it disappears again. As soon as I choose channel two, it's back. Right, therefore, I know that this controller information, here it is now, it's still controlling my cutoff for my synth. It's quite obvious that it's controller number three because not only is it the highlighted controller when I open this list but if I choose any other controller that cutoff information in Hyperdraw disappears and as soon as I choose controller number three again there it is so this is controller number three and it's on MIDI channel two so I know now that the cutoff is controller three on MIDI channel two there's no need for me to Go here, choose ESM cutoff, put in some moves and then transfer them into Hyperdraw. I don't need to do that. I can just, from the get-go, choose controller number three and I'll be ready to control the cutoff on my SM. Oh, really, you think that, do you? Well, it's one way to try that. Let's take out the cutoff. Just use the hoovering technique, get rid of it completely. OK, and I'll cycle around with Command Y on my Hyperdraw to my note velocity. All right, now I shall go to my list. I'll choose controller 3. I'll even put it on MIDI channel 2. And now I'm going to start to draw in whoops, my controller moves for my cutoff for my ES7. I know damn well it's the right uh, controller number. This is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. I don't need to use the track automation anymore to, to get the right controller number and then transfer it into Hyperdraw afterwards. I've saved a step. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Let's have a look. Is it controlling the cutoff for the SM? It's controller number three. It's it's on MIDI channel number two. Let's have a look. There's the cutoff. No! <laughs> it's not doing it. Damn it. Well, maybe it's something to do with the channel then. I definitely know it's controller number three. Let's try 
let's try changing the channel to channel one. Well, now it disappears, but oh, all right, then I've got controller number three now on channel one. Okay, I'll, I'll try the same thing. I'll draw in some cutoff. Maybe the, it's something to do with the channel. You know, maybe it's something to do with that. It's... Right, there. It's controller number three, and it's on the right channel for the track. This will work. I know it's controller number three. All right, so let's look at the SM. Here we go. There's the cutoff on controller number three. No, <laughs> it isn't doing it. Because this, this is not how it works, see. Logic might make this display in the list highlighting controller number three. Let me actually undo all that to go back to my original correct and genuine cutoff control information. Come on. Is it back yet? It, no, not yet. Come on, 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 undo. Is it back yet? No. Yeah, there, I've got it back. Now it's this is the original cutoff information converted from track automation into hyperdraw now. I've, I've just undone and uh, undo, undo, undo until I've got it back, right? And now it's controlling the cutoff again. You see, this is the thing you see about logic. You might think you know what the controller numbers are for these software instruments, but you don't, okay? And the truth is, it is impossible, or, or almost impossible, to find out what the controller numbers are for the parameters of software since, even something as simple as the ESM. And there's a reason for that, right? If we look at our list of MIDI continuous controllers, which we looked at earlier, there's 128 of them, right? So what's happening, you see, with the hyperdraw is it's using controller numbers. But with the track automation, what's happening is these parameters are all listed by name, and then Logic is taking these names and mapping them in the background to more complex forms of controller numbers. Okay? Therefore, it's almost impossible to find out the parameters by controller number for software since. So here's a trick we can do. Now we know about this two-way transferring, okay? I, I want to control the parameter for the ESM in this pattern in Hyperdraw. I want to control the filter decay, okay? There's no way to find out what the filter decay parameter number is, what, what the controller number is controlling the filter decay. I can't find that out down here in Hyperdraw by choosing numbers. But I can easily find it out on track automation by just going to the ESM, filter decay. So here's a technique. You don't need to put in all your controller moves for the filter decay and then transfer it into Hyperdraw. You simply choose the parameter by name. Now I know this is going to be the correct controller number, but I just don't know what the controller number is. So all I need to do is put one node over the region, only one node, and then track track automation, transfer that node, move visible track automation into the region. So I'm going to transfer that single node, which I know is the ESM filter decay. I'm going to transfer the single node into the region as hyperdraw. Okay, move visible track automation to region. All right, now there's that caveat again. I've got to knock out the opening node. That's it. Now, if I go down to my region and cycle around with command Y, there's the node. Now, I know this is filter decay. Well, I just used the technique of transferring from track automation to hyperdraw to make sure that I got the correct parameter number controller into my hyperdraw. Now, I've got that one node in there. And, of course, logic creates a node at the start of the region, right? I know that this is the correct controller number for my filter decay. And I can now build the filter decay move in Hyperdraw. I use the technique, the transfer technique, simply to identify the correct controller number. And now I know this controller will control my filter decay, because it's the right controller number. But that's the only way I can find out what the correct controller number is and get it into Hyperdraw to then be able to go and draw my filter decay moves. And if you look, this is controlling the filter decay perfectly. There you go. Okay, so there's another te technique you can use. Just use the track automation display here to choose the parameter of your synth, such as the, uh, the overdrive. Put in a single node. That's it. Then transfer that node into the region. Move visible track automation into the region. Make sure, clean up the opening node so there's no more track or, 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 automation for overdrive. That's it. And then cycle around in command Y. 
there is my automation node for the uh, overdrive of the SM and I know it's the right parameter number I know it's the right controller number it doesn't matter what my list here says I mean I, I've got this now as the visible hyperdraw parameter right I go to other it's telling me it's the pan control on on controller number 10 but you know that's wrong if you manually chose number 10 and put in these moves it would not control the overdrive of the SM but now I've transferred that single node in I've managed to get the correct controller number into hyperdraw in a very quick move and now I can edit in hyperdraw the correct controller and it's living safely now in my hyperdraw and it'll be there permanently now that's going to control the overdrive yep sure enough yeah so there's another technique you can use that's that's a godsend that trust me no more problems now identifying the parameters of your synths but you only need to put in the one node transfer the parameter into hyperdraw and then you've got this lovely display here to actually work on building your moves it's, it's better to build your moves here for synth movements within a pattern within a region yeah um, it's better to do it here in hyperdraw because you've got the grid you've got the ability to see the position of nodes you know relative to the timing of notes up here everything's good okay so let's look at some other tricks we can do now um, using these same techniques I'll, I'll show you some others now okay let's look at some more lovely tricks now one thing about controllers is Different shapes can yield some fantastic results. Okay, now for example, in the old days with analog synths before MIDI and all that, right? You could have an analog synth and they have these little sockets on them, little holes, you know, to plug in leads. And you could feed a lead into the um, a jack input socket on an old analog synth, you know, and you could send in a little voltage, you know, and it would trigger the filter on the synth, and you could use that to send in an on-off pulse in, into, to, into the socket, you know, and it would make the filter go on, off, on, off. Not a nice curve up and down, but on and then off, on and then off. And that type of move where something is on and then it's suddenly off rather than there being a curve, you know, like you don't get a curve going up to the on state, then it's on, and then, a, you know, a curve going down, a, like a, it's gradual. It's just on, oh, hang on. It's, it's on and then it's suddenly off. There's no slope or, or curve or anything, right? That's called a gate because it's like gate's on, gate is off. Gate is on, gate is off. Now, gating controller moves, especially if they're done at timed intervals, so you've got a gate on for a 16th, then off for a 16th, then on for a 16th, then off for a 16th. If you apply that to things like filters on your synth or things like that, you can get some great effects. Okay, this is all part of electronic music. Okay, so you've got things like that. And the same thing with sine wave shapes, and the same thing with triangle wave shapes. They all, if you apply those shapes, but timed to the tempo of the song, so there are eighths or quarter beats or something like that, or sixteenths, these can be great for triggering filters and parameters of synths to make all sorts of interesting patterns and effects, yeah? And likewise, at doing sweep moves like lovely sine wave sweeps or triangle sweeps on things like EQ filters and and pan uh, controller moves and things like that to do lovely sweeping pan moves. Shapes, different types of shapes for controllers can yield some fantastic things that we can do. So let's have a look now at shapes and how we can use these techniques of working between track automation and hyperdraw to do more tricks. Okay, now. I'm turn off my automation track automation display and I'll cycle this region around with command Y so the hyperdraw is turned off and it's back to its default colour. You know, that's the off state for a region, right? Um, yeah, let's have a look. I'm going to show you now quickly how to draw the three basic shapes, triangle, square and, and sine waves, okay? Now, triangles are the easiest. You just put in a single node anywhere and, of course, logic will always create a node at the beginning of the region. So you either start from an up position and you go down, okay, and um, in fact to do this I'm going to reduce the size of this region to a bar in length, 
you just zoom that in and I'll reduce my cycle range just so we're looking at one bar only all right hang on let me center that fit that nicely to my piano deck. okay so we've got one bar now and um, there's the beat lines and the divisions are in between so let's do this I'll put my snap automation is on and I'm going to put it into division so I shall just do a triangle easy now if you want to do one triangle move every quarter beat you just do it inside this quarter beat okay there's an, a down up movement and the same again all you have to do is match up so the nodes are at the same level at the bottom and they're on the same number level at the top okay and there's a basic triangle shape very very easy okay like that simple triangle okay over one bar and then you just copy that over um, or to do it the other way around obviously you know you start with the bottom node at the bottom whatever parameter whatever value rather and the top node at the top like that and you work the other way around all right so triangle is very very simple all right square wave shapes are harder because there's some weirdness in the way logic works okay what you've got to do is let's say we start with a We'll start at the top so you put your top node at the level that you want let's say uh, 86 then you decide how what the tempo of your square wave shape is going to be if we do it at 16th then you put your next node a 16th line across like that and there's the first opening bit just have to make sure these two nodes are the same value which is 86 in this case now you then want to bring in your bottom node but this bottom node has to be on the same snap to the same grid line directly vertically below the top node and the, the logic has this weird thing where as you drag this node across and as soon as it gets to be snapped to this division line the node above on the same snap position gets knocked out look up oh, gone there is a way around this to solve it what you do is you click to input a node on the next division line drag it down let go of it then click and grab it with the left mouse don't move it then hold down alt and drag off a copy and for some reason when you drag a copy off like that it and it snaps to the grid line directly below the node above it doesn't delete the node above all right so you just set this let's say we'll put this to six then i put this node here to six so these are the same same thing for the top node next one on the on state right i click to input a node on my next division line and, it, and my snap is snapping these nodes to the grid, right? Drag it up, like that. Same thing, let go of it, then click to hold it again, hold down Alt and drag across, and a copy gets dragged across, and it doesn't knock out the node directly below on the same grid line. Then make sure this node is set to the same as these two, and this one. And you just carry on like that. Okay, so now to what I can do now is I can choose my automation select tool, grab that lot like this, command C and copy, move my playhead to um, here, command V and paste in. There's my next step. Snap the playhead to this division line, command V, and I build my square wave shape, command V, snap the playhead. Command V, snap the playhead, Command V, etc., like that. And what I've done now, oops, is I've put in a square wave move on this controller across the whole bar, and it's at sixteenths, a sixteenth on, a sixteenth off, a sixteenth on, a sixteenth off, right? But you can do it to any tempo you want, obviously, you know, I mean, just I'll hoover up. Actually, I'll undo Command Z, Z, just undo all that pasting. If you want a, the tempo to be different, well, then you just change the distance between these nodes. You just drag this across like that, then grab these two nodes, drag those across like that. And now we've got an eighth. Look, I've changed my division here to eight. We've only got eighth division lines now. Okay, so look, that's an eighth on and an eighth off, and then you carry on like that. So you, that's how you do your tempo, whether it's eighth, sixteenths, whatever. Let's put this back to sixteenths. All right.
That's a square wave. That's how you do it with that technique of dragging off a copy to be able to snap two nodes on the same vertical line, one above the other. Okay. And lastly, sine wave shapes. I mean, they're not exact sine waves, but as near as damn it. Okay, now with a sine wave, we have an up and down cycle around. We have a positive and negative cycle, so our first node has to be in the middle somewhere. Now, I'll do a sine wave sweep at, uh, say, quarter beat. So you put another node there, a quarter beat apart. It's a quarter beat, okay? Then put a node in the middle. Now you decide if you want to go up for the first cycle, positive, or down, negative cycle for the first cycle. Okay, um, you can actually change this afterwards. So you drag, I'll show you that, but look, you put a node then in the middle and you move it up or down, whatever. Let's start with up. Set the position, how high you want that to go, the top value, so to speak. And then we now need to use the curve tool and we push on this line. And as soon as we've got it going into a concaved or convex shape, we hold down shift and that locks that shape. We can't make the S shape then. Whereas if I'm in S shape and hold down shift and lock that, I can then only make S shapes, but not convex or concaved. So just grab the line. As soon as you've got a curve going either convex or concave, hold down shift and that locks that shape and also makes it finer to, to move the line. You get a finer resolution, right? Make a nice curve like that. Same thing, click on the next line, push, get the curve going, hold down shift, push that out, make a nice shape like that. Okay, and that's it, now we've done it. Now we change, now, oh yeah, one thing, with the pointer tool, I can drag the peak up and down and make that curve go either shape to begin with either a positive curve up, you know, a positive cycle or a negative cycle, all right? So that's my first one. Use my select tool now, highlight that, command C, copy. Now to paste in, we want to put the playhead further across. We don't want to paste in directly next to it. Command V, paste in, and Logic has screwed up the paste. It, it, Logic does sometimes screw up nodes when you paste in like that, but look, what we want to do is push that across like that, and we've got to re-push this curve up. So you, again, using the, the curve tool, push this curve up. As soon as you get that curve shape going, hold down Shift to lock it, and then push this up. Now we've got a nice display of two positive curves. Which kind of looks like Jordan. <laughs> if you don't, if you're American or you're not British or you're any other um, any other nationality, Jordan is a model, a glamour model, famous in Britain for her ample cleavage, which was of course cosmetically altered. Anyway, so what we can do now is we grab on the nipple here, no sniggering at the back, Simpkins, and we just drag the node down, or the nipple, and now we've got a lovely cycle positive negative cycle over two beats and then all you do is get the select tool highlight that lot yep, highlight that lot so it's all highlighted command C copy uh, put the playhead now this could be a hard one to work out put the playhead let's put it there make sure it's snapped command V paste in yeah, there you go. But again, Logic has screwed up this first curve. I don't know why. I don't know why it does that. It's put in an extra node, you see. So using the pointer tool, we knock that node out, and now we've got to use the curve tool just to push this line up. Again, get the curve going. Hold down Shift to lock it, and now I could push that like that. There we go. Okay, so we've got a nice sine wave sweep. Up for a beat, negative down cycle for a beat, positive up cycle for a beat, negative down cycle for a beat. Lovely jubbly. That's how you make a sine wave shape. Now we have to do these manually because unfortunately Logic doesn't have a tool to do these for us automatically. It's something that does need to be brought to Logic. Uh, I wish Apple would get on and add this feature to, uh, to Logic of being able to draw in controller shapes clocked to eighths, sixteenths or whatever, you know, so the cycle goes, you just, you know, Cubase for ages, since going back to Cubase SX has had the controller curve shape tool you simply drop a list down here choose the shape sign triangle or square wave and then you just 
get the tool and you drag across after selecting the correct controller number you just drag across and it makes a perfect sine wave sweep gets drawn in behind the tool clock to whatever snap you want if you put the snap on eights it will draw in a curvy sine wave going across that controller at eights or a square wave at eights or a, or a triangle wave at eights and whatever tempo you want at eights quarter notes a quarter beats, sixteenths, whatever you want, just from a tool. Logic doesn't have that, so unfortunately we have to draw these curves manually. And it is time consuming, right? But there's so many great things we can do with these curves, so it's great to use them, but with, unfortunately Logic doesn't have a tool, so we can um, use another trick to get around that. We can pre-make our curves and then import them any time. And I'll show you uh, some stuff to do with that now, right? So let me... Um, knock all this out and that region accidentally extended out when I did that paste in earlier let's reduce it back down to a actually now let's put it back to its four bars in length actually the original pattern all right and just zoom it in a bit that's all come on I'm oh, sorry zoom out a bit okay let's look at how we can uh, import these curves and the ways that we can use them uh, with these tricks to do with hyperdraw and track automation. So what I do is this. <clears throat> I go file, open recent, or you go to your, you know, open and go to your hard drive. Here I've got this logic project here, this song called Waves. So I open it. I don't close my original song. And what's happened is, off screen, logic has opened this other song, this other project. There it is. And I created this before. Now you just all you need to do is create a song which has got the template wave shapes in. That's all you need to do, and then save it. Call it whatever you like, wave shapes, whatever. Now what I've done here is I've got four tracks, all the audio instrument tracks, and I've put the ESM synth on each track, and I've simply chosen the parameter cutoff from the track automation. Then I've used the track automation and I've drawn in these shapes, because remember when you draw in track automation you, you use exactly the same tools and techniques as hyperdraw so I've shown you how to do it you just do it with the track automation instead of the hyperdraw but the, the techniques I just showed you for drawing curves and this um, gate effect and everything is identical so you make this preset song it took me about 40 minutes to do this you've got a square wave I've got a square wave at 8 so that it's on for a 16th then off then on for a 16th and off and the effect is I get an on state for my gate every eighth that's a sixteenth in length and I've got a sine wave sweep at quarter beats well, that's like beat 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 I've got a sine wave shape at eights and I've got a triangle wave at eights and they're all controlling the ESM cutoff and inside every pattern there's a single ESM note oh, like this Oops, I don't want you open. Go away. Go away. That's it. The SM's a bit quiet. What's going on here? Oh, the cutoff's right down. Yeah, there's the note. So there's that single note going across the whole bar um, for each track, and I've put the track automation over the top with these shapes. Now, this is a, a gating effect affecting the filter of the e, of the ESM. All right, this is what a gate effect on a filter sounds like as it gates the filter of this single note playing across this bar going boom, boom across the bar. Listen to how this square wave shape gates the filter. Oh yeah. That's a great effect, isn't it? And it it's already sounding a bit dubstepy, isn't it? Now, if I hold down shift and click on these lines, the top lines, and I'm actually doing this with the pointer tool, not the automation select tool. And then drag up. I can drag up the top state. In other words, the on value. I can drag it up for the whole gating row of gates, yeah, of gated shapes. That's, this means when my filter comes on, it'll be on with the filter higher up. Okay, so it's going to be more filter when the gate's on, right? The, the filter will be higher. So here we go. Okay, and 
I could do the same with the bottom state, uh, not have it go off quite so drastically, like not have the filter turn all the way down for the off state. So again, I hold down shift and using the pointer tool, for some reason I'm not using the automation select tool here, but it works. It just, whoops, you just click on those lines like that. Okay, and then I can push up my bottom filter value so that the when when the gate goes off it's not turning the filter all the way off and it sounds like this but what a great effect that's what a gated filter is right a gate is this on and then straight off on and straight off and it makes that a wonderful effect do we want to use these gated effects in our electronic dance truck of course we do okay um okay that's a gate okay let's turn that off now let's listen to the sine wave shape. Okay, this is doing it at quarter beats on the filter cutoff, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Completely different sound, isn't it? The way the curve affects the filter is different. <laughs> Let's do it on the eighth uh, sine wave shape because it's like um, more the same tempo as the square wave, right? <laughs> Alright, the resonance is a bit high on that ESM. Hang on. Let's just turn the resonance down. Okay, and um, this is what the sine wave sounds, sounds like at eights. In fact, what I'll do is let me choose a preset for the ESM. Let's choose analog base one. And I'll choose the same analog base one preset for the ESM on the square wave track. Analog base one. And now they've both got the same settings for everything. Let's hear them. This is the square wave filter. Oh, oops, sorry. This is the square wave filter. Okay. And that sounds different to the same tempo in this sine wave shape. Okay, slightly different the way the curve changes the filter. And again, you can adjust the positive and negative cycle value or level for these curves. Hold down shift and click on each of the top nipples. Like that, and then drag all those up so you get them, you know, the filter's going to be on much higher. And the same for the bottom states, just, you know, click on the background to deselect and using shift, click on the bottom cycle, the negative cycle nipples. And then drag these down so the filter would be lower or higher, whatever we want. Yeah, you know. Okay, so that's that's the sine wave shape. Let's just undo that and undo that. And finally, our triangle wave shape, which on the filter sounds like this. I'll set the ESM the same to the um, analog base one. Yeah, and this is the triangle shape. You know, they're all subtly different the way they affect the filter. You know, but very, very useful. Very, very useful. And we can do some great things with these, not just with synth filters and th parameters of synths. So let's look at how we can use the techniques we've learned so far with these pre-made curves. You just make these curves, as I showed you how to do it, in the track automation, so you've got a different type of, all your different types of shapes, and there they are. So, let's bring one of these shapes, one of these automation um, shapes, into our song, and uh, let's do that. So, I highlight this region here, which has got the cutoff on it. I do command C, copy. Go to my song here. Put the playhead here, snap it to the uh, to this bar, and Command V paste in. Logic says, "Do I want to copy the automation data?" Meaning, copy in the automation with the region I'm pasting in, and I say yes, copy. And now, if I put my automation display on with the A key and cycle to my ESM cutoff, which is the active parameter, look, let me just choose it there. There is the cutoff square wave shape. Let me just zoom in on that. Hang on. Hey, come back here, you. There is the lovely cut-off shape pasted in with that region. Okay, we've got the controller shape into our song now. We didn't have to draw it all over from scratch, right? 
Now then, uh, Logic will create some erroneous nodes maybe, so you need to get those out and um, just bring this one up. Okay. And then go back here and knock out this first node. And what happens then is it takes on the value of the next node it meets down here. Okay, so there's the automation. Now we know the automation isn't connected to the region, so I can highlight the region and delete it. But just don't erase the automation. Now I've got my lovely automation shape sitting on the track and you know what I'm going to do next don't you of course you do what I thought is I put my snap automation on and make sure snap to absolute value is on keep this in something like beat and I get my automation select tool highlight this track automation and simply drag it across where I do want it to live like that so I'm putting it on top of my bit of music and this will now affect the filter doing a square wave gate over this pattern. Here we go. Oh yeah, there is one thing. There's already the previous controller information living in Hyperdraw for the cutoff, right? So what we could do is we could delete that. I'll just cycle around. Come on, Y, come on, Y, come on, Y. There's my cutoff. Well, I won't delete the whole lot. I'll just... Yeah, I will. Oh, well, actually, hang on. just to show you, you can always undo it, get rid of all that. There's no more cutoff control in the region now. Okay, so this this cutoff track automation, this square wave shape at eight, so I just brought in from the other song, is going to affect the filter now, changing the cutoff, gating the cutoff of the SM over this pattern just for the first bar. Yeah, hear that? It's quite a nice sound actually. It's kind of rhythmic, yeah. Okay, fantastic. And once it's in there, and I want, you know, if I want it to cover the whole region, then all I have to do is use my automation select tool. Let's get rid of this piano roll a minute and just zoom in here a bit. Okay, get my automation select tool. Um, I need to take out that node there. Okay, and I get my select tool select all this command C copy put my player over here like that snap it command V paste in uh, hello oh no wait a minute it's track automation is it I need to hold down alt and drag a copy off here we go there we go and then just oh, bring it across like that and let go now change my snap to division I'm snapping my automation, just drag this in one, there we go. Now I've doubled it up across the bar. Now it's over two bars, etc. And it's the same thing, you know, if I want to change um, the value of the upper and lower filter moves, just use the pointer tool, click on the strip along the bottom or the top to deselect and then hold down shift and go along clicking one by one, grabbing my, oops, let's do that again go along one by one clicking on these top lines like that and of course I'm not going to do the whole lot and then, then just I can raise the top value of the filter yeah and the same with the bottom I can shift and click and grab the bottom lines like this one by one just I'm bringing them in one by one like that the same thing I can drag the lower values down like that whatever I want or push them up whatever yeah so that's how you would get your um, square wave in okay now let me undo all that undo 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 and I want to undo the uh, removal of that cutoff control in my region itself hang on I oh, like the region. There we go. Ah, it's back now. That's my cutoff control. It was in the region as hyperdraw. Okay, so that's how you can bring. You know, you bring in these shapes and put them over your track or to put them onto. The, you know, bring them in from the track automation from this song. They're ready-made shapes. Bring them in by having them. You know, over these regions like this. The regions themselves don't have to have a note in at all. But I just put that in there so I could hear what I was doing. You know, when I was making these shapes. 
you just copy the region with the track automation over the top, paste it into your new arrangement. Yeah, delete the region behind the track automation, but don't delete the track automation when logic asks you. Then you just highlight that and drag that track automation across. Now, you're thinking to yourself, ah, wait a minute though, mate. You've made all this track automation over here using the ESM cutoff. Well, that's all very well and good if I want to bring in a, a you know, bring in these shapes to control some the filter cutoff on my ESM. But what if it's not the ESM cutoff I want to apply this shape to? What if it's not even the ESM synth? What if I want to use that shape to control the parameter of a different synth or a different parameter of the same synth? Ah, well, he he he. All is not lost because I'll show you another. Th fantastic thing now let me just drag this automation data back over the beginning of the region like that there we go check this out <coughs> cutoff is my current visible active you know the selected track automation parameter right well watch this I just hold down alt drop down my list go to the SM and I'll choose filter decay let go with the left mouse, but I'm still holding down Alt, and now I can let go of Alt. And it says, do you want to convert or copy the automation data? Now I can either make a copy of this shape, this automation, and then what Logic will do is it will leave the ESM cutoff as the square wave shapes, but it'll make a copy of that and then convert it to the filter decay, or simply just do a straight conversion. I'll just do a straight conversion. Bam. And it's converted the uh, it's converted the track automation for the cutoff, which I brought in from here as a template. The, the shape it's converted it to filter decay. And now look, I open the ESM, and it's now this square wave shape at eights, you know, going wow 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 at eights is is, a, is controlling the filter decay. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, it's just brilliant, man, and not only uh, controlling parameters of the synth again now that uh, this this is my visible controller uh, for the track automation I just hold down alt and I'm now going to choose volume convert it's converted now this is controlling the fader on the track check it out look watch the fader down here oh what a great effect Oh, getting some track. I'm getting some lag there from the screen grab software. Here we go. Listen to that effect on the f uh, doing that fast up and down gating effect on the volume control. Absolutely awesome, right? Okay, so let me um, let's just get rid of all this track automation. Right, let's delete it. Let's bring in a different shape. Okay. No more automation on that track. Let's bring in a different shape. Let's bring in a sine wave shape, and I'll show you another trick. Uh, go back to this song with my wave shapes. I'll choose the quarter beat sine wave sweep, right? Again, highlight the region, Command C, copy. Come over to this song here, like that. Snap my player to a beginning of a bar. Command V, paste in. Yes, I do want to copy, in other words, copy in that data from the other song and it, we know it's ESM cutoff that's the active parameter there I select it and there's my lovely sine wave curves now logic has put in a couple of bum extra nodes at the edge of the region don't worry about that knock those out and then click that node and it will set itself to the same level as the first node it meets here now let's zoom in and look at this there's our lovely sine wave sweep over our region but it's controlling ESM cutoff. But we, all, we already know we can change that. So let's do something really cool with this. Now at the moment, it's a sine wave sweep, and the centre nodes. Zoom in even further so I can show you that. These centre nodes hit. Oops, here I just knocked that one out. Yeah, the centre nodes like there, there, and there. They're not on. Let's let's con let's convert this curve to pan. Okay, so we'll do that first. This is the visible track automation. Hold down Alt. Oh, in fact, no, before I do that, we need to get rid of the dummy region behind it. So highlight the region, backspace to delete. Don't erase the automation, now it's left on its own. Automation select tool, grab that automation. Make sure my automation snap is on and drag it across on top of our region. 
Oh, dark, there we are. Lovely, jubbly. Now, let's say we've got this lovely region here. And we've got the pattern playing away in there. Let's turn up the volume. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have this, this curve do a lovely pan sweep over this four bar pattern. Sweep the pan. So the pattern's playing and it's being swept from left to left to right in, in the speaker mix, right? So this is the visible track automation. We know it's CSM cutoff there. And we just hold down Alt, drop the list down and choose pan and convert to pan. Look at that, now it's pan information. Check the pan, check the pan out on the track here. Okay, now it's pan information now, and the thing about pan is is that the center nodes, these center nodes, because you've got the positive curve and the negative curve cycles, right? The center nodes have to be on the center line. At the moment, they're on minus 17, so we highlight the whole lot with the select tool and drag the whole lot down until our center nodes are on zero. There we go, now they're all on zero. So the center node position, as each cycle sweeps, is on center pan. Again, go forward and just knock out this first node with the pointer tool, and it resets itself to match the first node it meets here, which is zero. So everything's zero, zero on the center line. Okay, now at least we know the center of each cycle is going to be exactly center pan. But let's look at the pan down here again. It's not panning hard left, hard right, is it? No, so again, we use that technique that we showed when I was showing you how to draw the curves and manipulate the curves. Hold down shift and click on the nipple. Simpkins, stop sniggering, I've told you, boy. Just push them all up. Now they're up to 64, so they're going to pan hard left, minus 64. That's hard left, right? And if I bring the playhead over the top of one of those peaks, look, full pan down here, right? 64, minus 64, full pan left. Now the same thing. Click on the little strip here or here to deselect. Hold down shift and now we'll click the bottom little node or nipple. Drag these down and they are plus 63. Again, bring the playhead over the middle exactly on top of one of those nodes and sure enough over here, that's slightly off but. But these are on minus 60, uh, plus 63, you can see that. So they're now panning for this cycle, this side, they're panning hard right. And now it will pan hard left, hard right, and this lovely sweeping shape. Watch the pan here, down here, right? Okay, fantastic. The only thing is the tempo's a bit fast, isn't it? It's going what, 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 what. Every beat it's going pan, 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 pan over this pattern. Far too fast. So hey, but check it out, we can use a trick that we've learned with, in combination with something else we've learned in this Piano Edit chapter to change that. Check this out. Not only can we convert any track automation to any other track automation, right? But we can do this. Remember, we can convert our track automation to Hyperdraw. Highlight the region, track, track automation, move, visible track automation, to the region. In other words, we're going to move this pan from track automation into the region as hyperdraw. Bosh. Done. Okay, now let's go to our piano edit. Cycle around with Command Y. There's our lovely pan sweep. It's already pre-highlighted because we did a transfer in. Look, if I click, now it's de-highlighted, right? Already pre-highlighted when you transfer in, but if not, you know, if it gets somehow de-highlighted, you know, just use the select tool and highlight the whole lot like that. Now we're going to use a technique we learned earlier in this Piano Edit chapter. We go to Functions, make sure include non-note MIDI events is ticked. If it's not, like that, just select it with the mouse and let go and now it's ticked because we want to affect these controller moves that are now transferred into Hyperdraw, right? Okay, so Select Tool Select a whole lot of curves, which are currently every quarter beat. Functions. This is this has to be ticked. Transform. Half speed. Remember that? The transform half speed, yeah? 
operate only because we've already pre-selected our, our curves and we've doubled the tempo uh, sorry we've halved the tempo of these of this curve sweep it's now it's now doing the sweep a full cycle of the sweep only two sweeps per bar now it's already pre-highlighted operate again and it's now made only one cycle sweep per bar because remember this is a four bar region yeah fan bloody tastic look at that so now we've got this here's our region in the arrange area here come on zoom Hello, someone's getting some screen grab delay there. Come on, what's going on? Zoom, yeah, there we go. There's our region, it's four bars long. Are we looking at it down here? Let me fit that to the cycle range to the my piano edit. Look at that. Four bars, one cycle for this bar, one cycle for this bar, one cycle for this bar, one cycle for this bar. We doubled it and then doubled it again so that we doubled it from one cycle every quarter beat we doubled it to one cycle every two beat, uh, two quarter beats, and then doubled it again, making one cycle every four beats. In other words, one full cycle per bar. Yay! And we can do it the other way round, remember, if we want to speed up the tempo of our sweeps. And it doesn't matter whether these are square, triangle, or sine waves, we just do it the other way round. We do transform double speed. And it makes the tempo faster. <laughs> Now it's at, uh, every quarter beat. Now it's every eighth. Now it's every sixteenth. Yeah, change this now to half speed. Operate eighths. Operate. Um, now it's uh, one cycle every beat. And again, you get the idea. It's half speeding it. In other words, making it, making. Which all we're doing is we're changing the tempo of these cycle waves whether whatever they're whether they're square triangle or, or, or sine waves we just choose half speed to make the tempo of them slower and now there's one cycle every bar over this four bar pattern or we use double speed to make them faster now it's four cycles over two bars now four cycles over one bar now four cycles over half a bar etc right fantastic so we can change the tempo of our of our lovely wave shapes in our controllers, any time using double speed, half speed. Whoops! Now I want now half speed. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Now I've got a lovely sine wave sweep every bar across this four, four bar region. Absolutely brilliant. And now you know what we can do now, don't you? Now we go back to our region. Cycle around with Command Y on the hyperdraw. There is our controller information. We've now change the tempo so we've got a lovely sweep every bar and now all we do is we transfer this parameter only back into track automation so we cycle around with command y get our lovely pan sweep which has now had its tempo changed and we do track track automation move visible region data to the track automation logic screws up the first node here don't worry just click on this line here to deselect knock out that node and it resets to zero there we go and now we've got our lovely pan sweeping over this four bar pattern absolutely beautiful and before we do that i just want to go into piano roll here cycle around command white oh, look at my other controllers this is a bit manic this cut off let me just drop that down okay and bring these these up a bit because it's a little bit low the filter there Come on, why the resonance? That's going a bit mental. Let's just keep calm that down a bit. Command Y, yeah, and these envelope moves, the filter envelope. Let's just make those not so crazy. All right, and let's just check our ESM. Let's turn the overdrive down. Yeah, that should be all right. I just want to tidy that, you know, cause make sure there's no controllers going mental on that pattern. Um, I think there's an extra note crept in there that shouldn't be there. That shouldn't be there. Let's hear that. But look at the lovely pan going on here. Now we've got this beautiful sine wave sweeping pan working over this pattern. Yeah, look at it. Look at the pan move here. Absolutely fantastic. 
And of course, we can convert this beautiful. Now we change the tempo of that sweep. We can we can change it to anything. Actually, again, let me cycle around Command Y. Just I want to still change that filter up. It's a little bit flat down the bottom. Let's just make it a little bit more audible down the bottom. Yeah, it's it's, it's going a bit low. Okay, and let's hear that. Okay, okay. So there you go. Um, yeah, at the moment it's doing pan. This lovely pan and sweep every every bar. Um, but we can hold down Alt and change this to volume, and we've got this convert. And we've got this lovely volume sweep now. Watch the volume control here, but only every bar. Oh, let me correct the pan. Let me center the pan first. Yeah, nice. Uh, or let's convert it to something a bit more different. Um, let's hold down Alt, drop down the list. Let's convert these curves from the volume to the channel EQ uh, peak one frequency convert. Now these curves are sweeping the peak one frequency on the channel EQ. So let's go into the channel EQ. Okay, this is the peak one frequency. All you do is you just boost up the gain, reduce the, the Q so it's a bit narrow, and this will now sweep this up and down. It's sweeping the frequency. Oh, but I need to put my fader up here. Hang on, let's set to that. Okay, check out this lovely filter sweep now on the EQ. Absolutely fantastic. You, you can convert this to anything you like. Fan bloody tastic. And there's just one last thing to show you. Uh, let me convert it back to pan. Hold down Alt, choose pan, and it's converted back to pan. Now watch this. I'm going to transfer this pan back into the region so it's back as hyperdraw. Highlight the region. This is the visible track automation, the pan track, track automation, move visible track automation to the region. Now I've put the pan, just get rid of this node. There's another node here, get rid of that. Okay, turn off the pan automation completely. There's no more pan automation there. But let's look in our region now. Whoops, come on, double click. Cycle around with Command Y. There's our pan. Now it's in the region now. Okay, we've transferred this pan for the track into the actual region. But uh, normally synth parameters live in here, right? Things to affect your synth, right? But will this pan still work? Even though we've transferred into the region and it's now living in the region as hyperdraw. Well, watch the pan on the track. My God, yes, it does. Fantastic, huh? Anyway, there you go. There's some, there's some tricks. So you can see all the amazing things that we can do with um, hyperdraw. Yeah, once you start interacting hyperdraw with track automation and this two-way transfer business and all the tricks, it's it just opens up so many fantastic things we can do. And just there is another thing, by the way, just quickly. Um, I've just shown you, you know, about this whole thing where I, uh, I'm i importing these pre-made wave shapes. Now, what I did before was I, you know, I've got this preset wave shape that I've created in track automation. I just highlight the region, copy, come over to this song, pasted it in as track automation over the top of the dummy region, right? Then deleted the uh, region behind it, dragged it over the region, and then I could convert it into hyperdraw to change the tempo. Once I've changed the tempo and got the tempo right, I convert it back to track automation, etc. But th there's another technique you can do to save a step. If you, if you are importing a curve shape um, into the current song you're working on, and you know you want to change the tempo, then you can save a step by doing it like this. You just do the conversion here on your on your preset wave song, right? You just highlight the region and do track track automation and move the visible track automation into the region. So we've converted it to hyperdraw first. Then highlight the region. Hey, 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 be see, yeah, be, you have to be careful. Then highlight the region. Command C copy, and we've copied the region now, but the curve template has been put into hyperdraw first. Now we come back to our original song. Let me just close the piano roll. Okay, come back to our original song. 
put the playhead, snap to the beginning of a bar, command V to paste in. We don't need to copy the track automation this time because we're, we're, we're bringing in the region where the curves have been converted into hyperdraw. They're already living in the region, so there's no need to copy. Okay, and then we just double click this region. We can actually knock out the dummy note. We don't need that. And cycle around with command Y and there's the curves already in hyperdraw. And that way we're ready to do our, our speed change, our tempo change on the curve straight away. But there is a caveat to this. We brought in a one bar region with this cycle loop, um, this wave shape going over it, a one cycle every beat, and we want to half the tempo now to make it, you know, half the tempo. But that will make it double the length. And the caveat is, is that when you do that, you must extend this region out to double the length so that there's room for this to extend out when we half speed. So now look, what I do is I get the automation select tool, highlight all this, and then do that um, transform. Half speed, just do it. And because I've extended the region out first by the same length again, it's given the space for that uh, half speed to extend into. And then if I want to t uh, half the tempo again, I've got to drag this region out to double the length again. So it's two bars, now I've got to make it four bars, and then there's room for the curve to extend into. Okay, that's it, I've done it straight away. You can do it that way, it just saves you the step of, of uh, converting it from track automation into hyperdraw to change your tempo. You, you've brought it in already as hyperdraw, ready to change the tempo, and now I've changed the tempo, all I need to do is highlight the region, cycle around with command Y until I've got the correct curves as, as hyperdraw visible, click on the region with the pointer tool and, and convert out back into track automation. So region, oh, track, track automation, move um, visible region data to track automation. And now it's back as track automation, fine, delete the region behind it, don't erase the data and use the select tool, highlight the lot. Make sure my snap automation is on and I'm in the snap of bar and just drag it across. Snap it over my actual music and that's that and it's done. It just saves a step like that. Yeah? And now I can change it to control whatever I like. So I'll change it to control the filter of the EQ again. So hold down Alt, drop the list down, go to the channel EQ and I'll assign it again to the peak one frequency. There we go. Okay, now I have did that before where I put this cur a curve shape on the fr peak one frequency but before that curve shape if you remember it, it it had been pan before and I'd set the curves so the peaks were right at the top and the troughs were right at the bottom then when we converted it to sweep the EQ on the um, channel EQ yeah uh, to sweep the frequency it swept all the way from the lowest frequency all the way to the highest frequency because the because um, the tops, if I get the pointer tool and hold down shift and grab these peaks because before the peaks were right up at the very top so it swept the filter all the way up to the peak look, right up there but you don't have to do that um, you can get some nice filter sweeping effects if you don't go from all, all the way from the top to all the way to the bottom so to speak so if you get the select tool Highlight the whole lot and just move the middle nodes up first. Whoops, hang on. Let me zoom in deeper so you can see that. Grab on one of the lines and push the whole lot up. And we're looking at this centre line of nodes in the middle. That's going to be the middle frequency. And it'll sweep up to the peaks and down to the troughs from this. So push the whole lot up. And I've set my centre frequencies at 500 hertz. Okay, now... I can use the pointer tool and use the shift technique and click on the nipples yeah, and just push those up to the top frequency I want to sweep to it's about 5k and then repeat and rinse with the bottom peaks or nipples and drag those down let's say to 80 hertz or something so now it's going to sweep from 80 hertz up to 5k and the middle is going to be about 500 hertz and then all I have to do is just go down here and knock out this node there we are so watch the sweep now I'll put up the gain and it has a different effect it sounds different have a listen
so always experiment with your curves because you, uh, the curves themselves make great effects but also the height of the peaks and the uh, value that you put the low points and the high points to of your of your sh wave shapes also affects whatever it is you're controlling a lot as does the center frequency in the case of eq sweeps and things like that yeah so there you go some some other little tricks that you you know just remember you can always bring your curves in as hyperdraw already to convert the tempo okay and then convert them to track automation and then convert them to whatever parameter you want yeah so there you go more lovely jubbly tricks um so quite a long part wasn't it of piano edit as i said but my god look at the fantastic things we can do and now i've showed you that once your mind starts working you'll you'll be able to think of all sorts of amazing things you can do these wave shapes and their rhythmic quality are a, are a foundation of electronic music you know and you'll find that there's all sorts of amazing things you can do um and there you go you know so hyperdraw great tool with its interaction with track automation and i've also shown you how to do the hardware control for external midi you know like in the old days yeah um so there you go that's that's the end of hyperdraw i hope it's been useful i've really enjoyed doing this bit actually um so there you go hope hope you learned something hyperdraw what a fantastic tool what a fantastic part of logic and i'm gonna have a couple now and i'll see you soon um for the final bit the arpeggiator tutorial okay so hasta la vista baby